Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs on suicide watch at Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center after two judges denied his request for bail. TMZ is reporting that due to his celebrity status and the allegations, this could bring unwanted attention from other inmates and be a threat to Diddy. What we've been told uh, by a former warden is he's a target. Um, um, that gets you, you score points uh, with other inmates. So that's a situation that obviously the uh, jail officials do not want to happen. Now we know Diddy is in so much trouble that he can't possibly escape this time. Either the elite that conspired against him will take his life or he will live out his life in prison. Both of those options don't appeal to him. And that's exactly why Gene Deal predicted Diddy would take his own life a while ago. And spend your life and your time helping men like yourself once you take care of your business and get on your knees and beg for Ms. Wallace's forgiveness for putting the notorious big in that situation that he lost his life. But now there are bombshells coming out about how Diddy was always a snitch. How do you know that Diddy was an informant and they wanted you to go more into detail about it? Can you do that? Well, see, if I'm in the car with Kirk Burroughs and him and our driver, and we go down to 26 Federal Plaza, I know 26 Federal Plaza is the FBI office. All right? Now, what they went down there and what paperwork they took down there, I did not know until I found out later that he was working with an agent in D.C., but he was arrested by an agent in New York. But I can't go into it, and the reason I can't go into it is because another individual found out this information and it's owed to him. But when Fox News and everybody say they can't find out who the agent is, that's bullshit. It's online. Have you got certain systems that you could find out who the agent is? Because we found out who the agent is, but it's not my story to tell. I would tell you that, brother, but it's not my story to tell. It belongs to somebody else, and they're going to see it come out. Puff was hit with a 40 rule because it's called a rule 40, because he didn't show up at the agent's office in D.C., the... New York agent arrested him. He got uh, uh, um, adjudicated of all charges in January of 1999. And how he is going to turn in big celebrity friends who were part of his horrifying crimes in order to get a better sentence. Let's bring in criminal defense attorney uh, Stacy Schneider. And Stacy, you say today's indictment reads like a mob indictment. What was most shocking to you of all these allegations? Yeah, the fact, Jake, that the government in, in this indictment presented evidence alleging that Sean Cones was running a criminal enterprise, and they actually named it in the indictment, the Combs Enterprise. And they said that this enterprise consisted of him as the alleged leader, his employees, assistants, staff, allegedly, that were able to procure women and alleged um, male sex workers to engage in performances for his own sexual gratification. Where it differs from a, a, a mob indictment, it has all the elements of putting together this racketeering allegation of all these moving pieces using resources from his businesses. But the fact that this is about an allegation of sexual gratification being accomplished by alleged human trafficking. It's one of the most unique indictments I've ever seen in this area, in the area of, of sex crimes, because they're not, the government isn't actually prosecuting crimes other than the 
uh, human trafficking or the sex trafficking, they're not prosecuting uh, any type of alleged uh, sexual to woman, women, although that's part of this racketeering scheme. Um, given that he's the sole defendant in this case and that you allege he's part of a conspiracy that involves members of his companies, do you anticipate a superseding indictment um, that uh, bring allegations against um, other members of his companies or other co-conspirators as well? I, again, I can't take anything off the table. Anything is possible. Our investigation is very active and ongoing. And I think a lot of you who cover this office know that when we say such things, um, that developments um, uh, are certainly forced. But how will the feds indict other celebrities by arresting Diddy? Well, the thing is, part of the evidence that was seized at Diddy's mansion were videotapes of his freak-off parties that he happened to record for blackmail purposes. Here's Gene Deal talking about how these tapes could be key evidence months ago. Jay speaking on it right now. He'll be one of the first dudes that they probably pull to the side and say, yo, well, you say that your man, I heard you on TMZ said that he never did this and he never did that, but um, ain't this you? If those pictures or those films or anything like that exists, you know what I'm saying? That's what they, they pay those agents to do. So, of course, I don't believe that none of the people who or his celebrity friends is gonna speak or say nothing until they're either contacted or they know what they really got. So you feel like they might be worried that they might be on tape at one of Diddy parties doing something they wasn't supposed to be doing. That means big names like Jay-Z, Rick Ross, and Nas could all be under fire from prosecutors. But will they let him expose them? My man, listen here, all those ones all of the all of one who made it to the Diddy party, to the after party, and to the hotel lobby. <laughs> they not gonna ruin their brand. They not gonna say nothing. Man, I was watching the other day, listen to me. They did that, they on Channel 2 News here in New York. Gail King and Nate and that other guy, they were talking about, they showed the, the uh, him beating Cassie and they showed him uh, the apology in the whole nine yards. All they said is that we have commentary about that, but we gotta go to a commercial. They never came back and said nothing about it. I was like, yo, damn. He still got power like that? Somebody still like him like that? Because you know he was running with Oprah and them. He was running with that whole crew. Weinstein, Oprah, Epstein. He was running with that whole crew. They want to know how we're going to do it. How the public is going to take him. Is the public going to uh, let him back in? And the public is not. The public is already canceling him. Sean Diddy, Diddy Combs, Combs has, has reportedly, reportedly been placed, been placed on, suicide on suicide watch, sparking concern sparking as he awaits concern trial as he in Brooklyn's trial Metropolitan in Brooklyn's Detention Center, Detention MDC. Center MDC. The once powerful music mogul once was arrested earlier this week on serious charges, week, including, on sex serious charges including sex trafficking and racketeering. MDC and has racketeering. a reputation for being a tough place, MDC and many are wondering what this means for Diddy as he faces his legal battles. Many are wondering. Diddy Combs has been denied bail in connection with the sex abuse and sex trafficking charges he faces. And as Les Trump reports, the music mogul who once traveled by private jet to all those mansions is now in a jail that is notorious for its bad living conditions. Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs spent his first night behind bars inside a facility that is being called Hell on Earth. The Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn is notorious for its appalling living conditions and rampant violence. How bad is it inside this federal lockup? There have been two murders, four suicides, and numerous stabbings and lockdowns in recent years. It's so out of control inside that four federal judges are reportedly refusing to send any more prisoners here. 
Donald Trump's former fixer, Michael Cohen, spent a harrowing year in federal custody. He says for someone used to a life of luxury like Diddy, prison life is a severe shock. You have a desk, you have a plastic chair, you have your bed with a one and a half inch mattress, no pillow, and you also have a locker. So you basically have three feet by five feet to move around. So you have a basic 15 square feet. It is a horrible, horrible place. Diddy's lawyers were so eager to keep him out of jail, they offered his palatial $48 million home in Miami Beach and his private jets as bail. Today, they are even offering to restrict female visitors to his homes, except for his mother, daughters, and the mothers of his children if he is released. They told the judge the jail he was being sent to is dreadful, dirty, inhuman, and an ongoing tragedy. Amid Diddy's ongoing legal drama, an old video of celebrities raving about his infamous parties has resurfaced on social media, sparking new conversations. In the clip, stars like Fat Joe and Nicole Richie talk about attending Diddy's legendary bashes, which were known for their exclusivity and wild nature. Call them modest get-togethers, others hedonistic romps. For the next 53 seconds, we'll take an in-depth look inside Diddy Parties. Diddy once threw a party on a jet flying around the world. Now, it started on a Tuesday and somehow ended on the previous Sunday. I don't know how he did that. Now that I'm engaged, I've decided to slow down a little. Three Diddy Parties a week, maybe four, well, not including the weekends. Well, I remember one day we went to this Diddy party. Well, what happened? Lil John forgot his pimp cup. Yup. D Rock went to Diddy and asked if he had a pimp cup. Lil John can borrow. Man, he had a whole bunch of pimp cup. He had a pimp set. It's hard to say which is more off the hook a Diddy party or a Diddy after party. Or a Diddy after after party, which is basically a pre party for the next. Diddy party. Though the celebs didn't spill any juicy details, Diddy's parties have long been rumored to be over the top with only A-list guests invited. These gatherings were once the talk of Hollywood, but with Diddy now facing criminal charges, those same events are being looked at with a lot more scrutiny. About the uh, searches of his residence, um, the, the uh, guns, the, the cases of lubricant and the videos, where were they found amongst his residents? Were they all scattered around the houses in one place. I kind of wanted to just get a better picture of, um, of how that stuff was found. Well, look, I, I think that some of the details um, uh, that you're seeking are in the detention letter. So for instance, um, some of the, the, the AR-15s, two of the three, the face AR-15s were found in his bedroom closet in Miami, um, broken down into parts along with magazines. Um, with ammunition uh, loaded in them. So um, some, of the, some of that detail is in the detention letter. Beyond that, I'm not gonna be able to get into uh, where other items were, were stored. The indictment alleges that Combs threatened and coerced victims to get them to participate in the freak offs. He used the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of the freak offs as collateral against the victims. And the indictment alleges that he maintained control over the victims in several ways including by giving them, by giving and threatening to take away financial support or housing, by promising them career opportunities, by monitoring their whereabouts, and even by dictating their physical appearance. Because of all of this, the indictment alleges that the victims did not believe they could refuse Combs without risking their security or facing more abuse. The indictment also alleges other acts of violence undertaken by Combs and others, including violence against witnesses to his kidnapping and arson. The indictment alleges that on more than one occasion, Combs carried or brandished firearms to intimidate and threaten victims and witnesses. Now, Combs did not do this all on his own. As I mentioned, Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy. He used his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way. Those individuals allegedly included high-ranking supervisors in the business, personal assistants, security staff, and household staff. The indictment alleges that those individuals facilitated the freak offs. They booked the hotel rooms and stocked them with the supplies, including drugs, baby oil, personal lubricant, extra linens, and lighting. When the hotel rooms got damaged, they helped clean it up. They arranged for victims and commercial workers to travel for the freak-offs 
and they delivered large quantities of cash to Combs to pay for the commercial workers. But they was gonna let him walk. If he probably had to, uh, for that profit agreement, they probably would let him walk. If he had any information regarding Puff having to underage boy, that the feds asked him. In 2011, In 2011, brother. So what did the feds know? Because the feds not coming there unless somebody made a report or somebody made some allegations against Puff. In 2011, to ask a friend of him, his, Jimmy Henchman, what do you know about that? But for them to ask him about that, it had to be more than a rumor. Somebody made a complaint somewhere. And it got, the feds got hold to that complaint. Now they're going to investigate that plant complaint when they get people under the barrel. Lose sight of what the cold hard facts are. This was not someone uh, who I vacationed with and who he and I enjoyed this great intimate relationship of brotherhood. This is someone who destroyed my life. I was a victim of a shooting that night in the club, December 27, 1999, in the face by Sean Puffy Combs. I was an innocent bystander. There's this notion online, what you did to make him do? Nothing, but not that I or anybody deserved it. I was an innocent bystander, but I am a survivor. Puff liked their story, what they saw. He gave it to their lawyer. They lawyer then sent them to the DA's office and those people testify against Sean. They had the same charge. So they separated lawyers. They had separate lawyers and everything went on Sean because Diddy found the witness against Sean and brought him forward. So, I guess, I, I guess that's how you do your man. When you don't want to go to jail. That's what happened, bro. Sean said it in the whole interview. On that documentary that Sean did from jail, he spoke about that, but he, he forgave. I'm about a Diddy party right now, but I don't know the rules of the game if I'm allowed to say it. Say it. You'll be okay. Um, one of my boys, a social media influencer, this was early back in like 2008. What, what's one of your boys? I'm not gonna expose him because he said some viable shit, but he was at a Diddy party and they invited him to Diddy's room. He walks in, Trey Songs was sitting on Diddy's lap making out with him and they asked him if he wanted to join. What the f? Gotta be, no, ain't no way. Ain't no they're, way. They're all undercover gay. I promise you that.